Hello guys and welcome to my Fallout 4 weapon tier list. In this tier list I will be ranking the different Fallout 4 weapons you can find throughout the game called Fallout 4, in case you haven't heard of it, which is a wasteland survival kind of game. Uh, if you don't know any more about it, I recommend looking it up. It's a pretty decent game. I have played on a big playthrough on my channel of the game. I think I reached 320 episodes, but outside of that it was 280 or something. Uh, but, but yeah, that's it, it's a long game. <laughs> anyway, um, I know every single one of these weapons. I have tried every single one of these weapons as well. Uh, although I haven't used all of them in a long time. So I might get some things wrong here and there. Like as an example, the Assaultron head here. I don't think I used that one more than like three times. And by three times, I mean shooting it three times. So I don't remember much about it. Um, but for the most part, I have a clue as to how these weapons function and, and how they are in-game. And this tier list is going to be based on all the different things about the weapon, not just damage, but also reload animation, how nice it is to use, how convenient it is to use, uh, how often you find ammo for it, you know, all that kind of stuff. So uh, without further ado, let me jump right into it with the first gun, which is the Buda -ba -dum, a combat shotgun. Now, this weapon, I think, appears later on in the game when you reach a certain level. Uh, all, all weapons do, of course. But this game is the, the uh, this gun is the strongest shotgun in the game. It is also uh, pretty, like, it's also semi-auto and has a lot of damage output. It also is pretty decent at medium ranges. It is such an overpowered gun. The worst part about it is that it looks very similar to the actual uh, assault rifle or, or the, whatever you want to call it. I mean, this is actually not called a assault rifle. This thing is called a a rifle. Um, I'm not. I don't remember the name. Um, but anyway, the um the combat shotgun. Now, the the main problem with the combat shotgun is one. It's it's a combat shotgun, so it's better long range. So it's not an S tier because then it would be good all around. I would say. Um, the other thing is that uh, while while it is a shotgun, it also, it's a bit of a weird weapon to use because, like, you spam the attack button, right? And it keeps shooting, keeps shooting. Uh, and then you build up damage over time with your enemy and stuff. But because it's a shotgun, and, and because Fallout 4 has a somewhat of a weird stagger system when they're far away, it, it gets a bit useless, again, at, at, above medium distance. So I would not put this one as, like, a huge one, but it is pretty A tier because it's the best, uh, one of the main guns I always run with if I don't run mods. It is just such a great gun to have in the beginning slash whenever you can actually get it. Uh, next up, we have a 10mm pistol, which is the first gun you get in the game, by the way. Now, th the gun itself is not anything special. It, it is... The first handgun you get, and it doesn't really have much going for it, uh, besides like being pretty decent in the beginning. It's, it's pretty much a very well-rounded, all-around pistol, and you can probably use it later on in the game too. But the problem with this gun is it gets outdated as soon as you get mid-game. That's when it kind of goes, oh, you have this pistol? Well, you better replace it with a rifle, or you better not use it ever again. Because it is going to get so outdone by all the other weapons pretty fast. So I would just put this at uh, B tier, I think. Because it's just not... It's useful. It can be good. But it gets outdated really fast. And then we have the Gamma Gun. Now the Gamma Gun I'm going to put on Deacon. I don't know why Deacon is the bottom tier. I actually like Deacon as a companion in the game, but... Oh well. Um... Anyway, the Gamma Gun is uh, part of the Children Children of Adam's arsenal. Like it, it is, it's a gun that pretty much shoots radiation. Now in the game, I think you can upgrade it so it also does a bit of damage, but I don't remember if that is indeed the case. Uh, on all of these weapons can be modified in a workbench, I'm pretty sure, except the the like special special ones. Just so you guys are aware. Um, but yeah. Anyway, the Gamma Gun. Uh, pretty useless in a firefight uh, because the AI in the game, the way they do radiation isn't as severe as the player's radiation. So whenever you do use a gamma gun, it, it just kind of pushes the enemy and they get a bit staggered and then that's all that really happens to them. I don't think, I mean, I think I've killed a couple people with it. But it's only after I fired way too many shots. It's just not useful unless 
I don't know, unless there's a specific enemy in the game I've never fought that is really weak to radiation. And uh, I don't think humans is that thing. So I don't really know how Bethesda made the stats about the about the Gamma Gun and how it actually functions. I just think it's meant to be the choice of the children of Adam because they worship Adam. And this is Adam's gun, so they shoot his glory on the enemies or something. So I think the gun itself is more symbolic than it's actually functional in, com in game and in combat. Alright, next up we have the alien pistol, I think it's called. Or just alien gun. I don't remember which of it it is, but it's an alien pistol anyway. You find in a cave uh, where there's an alien in the game. It's not a spoiler as much as like... It's just an easter egg, but... Uh, it's a pretty decent gun you can find in the game. And you find it in a cave where you find an alien. I'm not gonna say any more than that. Uh, and you'll get some ammo for it. The problem with this gun is I'm fairly sure you can't craft ammo for it. If you can, I, I, I apologize. Um, but it runs out of ammo later on because I think you get like 1,000 bullets or something. Uh, but the gun is so good that you run out of that pretty fast because you constantly use it. Uh, the consequence of running out of ammo with this gun is that no carrying around junk you can't use anymore. And you kind of have to throw it away. Which is the worst part about this gun, is that it has a little ammo. Uh, besides that, it is super good. Like, it, it is an A tier weapon. It actually is S tier, in all honesty. But because of the ammo problem, I'm gonna put it at A tier. It, it functions for the most part nicely, it has a nice reload animation. Uh, it's not bad, it's, it's the sign is also pretty good. It's just that as soon as you run out of ammo, you have to throw it away. And uh, yeah, that's why it's A tier, not S tier. Next up we have the, <clears throat> pardon, my, pardon my throat, uh, next up we have the Pipe Revolver. Now the Pipe Revolver is a nice weapon to use. The problem with it is it's not powerful. Like I, I love shooting it, I love reloading with it, I, I love using that instead of the original revolver in the game. But it's just, it just sucks, like it's not good in any capacity, it's just not great. Um, I wish the stats for it were higher so I would actually use it in my game, but I always end up throwing it away because all other guns are better than it. Probably because it's a junk gun, but like still, it's just all other guns are better than it, so I'm gonna put it in C tier. I, I do really wish I could put it up to B tier, even A tier, but it's just not near those levels at all. It just isn't close. And then we have the, the plasma pistol. AKA also plasma rifle because in this game you can upgrade the laser and plasma weapons to become laser rifles. I don't know if you can upgrade them to become laser shotguns. I think you can. You can also make them laser auto rifles or whatever. Um, auto pistols. So it's kind of all weapons in one, but you can only like upgrade once. You can't like you could or you can upgrade three of them and carry one of each if you really want to. If you're a laser focused character or something. Um, but by itself, the laser rifle or the laser pistol or whatever you want to call it, preferably rifle because that's when it's like higher stats and everything. There's less weight if, if it's a pistol. Um, it is super good. Like, it is actually very good. The uh, problem is, you don't get a lot of ammo for it. I actually just never have. Uh, when, it, when it comes to the plasma bullets you can find, they're not as. Like, they're rarer than microfusion cells, which is what laser rifles use. And uh, at least I think so, right? It doesn't use, no, no, it's, it's in earlier games uses microfusion cells. I'm pretty sure it uses special rounds in Fallout 4. N now, I'm not sure about that. But if that is indeed the case... <laughs> look, look at me, I, I've been playing too many Fallout games, I, I get confused. Because in earlier games, it does use microfusion cells. But in this, in Fallout 4, I'm pretty sure it doesn't. In any case, uh, it's a pretty good gun. I would recommend trying and using it in the game. The only problem is ammo, like I mentioned. And you run out of ammo pretty fast in it, because you can make it auto, you can make it semi. And when you do make it auto, it, it chews through enemies as much as it chews through ammo. So it's not the best game, game, gun <laughs> in the game, that's for sure. But it's probably the most effective against most enemies. So I'd probably put it at A tier, yeah. Again, it sucks that all the good weapons have little ammo except the combat shotgun. Actually, I might even bump the sh combat shotgun up to S. Nah, I'm gonna keep it there. Then we have this weird little gun. Now, I've used this gun, but I couldn't use it properly. I don't know how you're supposed to use it. I don't, I don't really know who it's weak against. 
I think it just kind of affects an enemy like the um, the Syringer rifle. But I, I don't really know how it works because I tried using it. It didn't really do anything. Uh, let me know if I did something wrong, but I just I just don't know how to use that gun. Oh, wait, wait. Uh, let me just double check something. So th this is this the rocket launcher? No, that's the rocket launcher. I don't I don't remember this this gun. Uh, I'll come back to that one later, I guess. All right. So next up, we have a fat man, correct? I just double checking because fat men usually don't launch missiles. They use they, they launch, you know, nuclear bombs. Uh, in any case, uh, since if it is the fat man, it is gonna go to B tier. Only reason it goes to B tier instead of C tier is because. Well, this use case is very limited. You can't use it indoors. You can't use it against someone close to you. And most enemies tend to try to somewhat rush you instead of taking cover and defending the territory. So you're more or less fire, like, forced to not use the fat man ever. And I never really use it because of that reason. If I do use the fat man, it's because I want to get one shot off into an enemy base and then use my other guns afterwards. It's more like a bomb the enemy and run in. Rather than just continue to bomb the enemy. So ultimately, it is a decent weapon. It is just not good to use whenever enemies are semi-close to you. Because you'll always kill yourself. And that's like the worst part about it. You always kill yourself with it. I don't think I have ever like not killed myself with it if I used it in a let's play or a playthrough or whatever. It, I always kill myself with it. And it just ends up going horribly for me. Okay, the next weapon is the... Is that the Magnum? I'm pretty sure it's the Magnum, right? It is called... No, 44 pistol. Okay, well, 44 pistol it is. But by the way, I have I have a little thingy to the side just in case I forget what the names of the guns are. That reminds me, is the Deliverer not here? Because it's his own gun type as well. I guess I'll talk about that at the end then. Anyway, um, the pistol, the 44 Magnum or the 44 pistol as it's called. Um, it is probably the best pistol in the game, if I'm not mistaken. Besides, you know, laser pistols and... Actually, no, it's not. It's the third best, I think. You get it pretty early on, too, as far as I remember. Uh, you don't have to be a high level. And you also kind of just need to aim for the heads and it does a lot of damage. Overall, it's not a bad gun. It's actually pretty decent. Only problem with this gun is just that it fires slowly. It has fewer rounds in the, the actual cylinder. And it doesn't really... You have to... It's, it works best indoors, I should say. That's kind of when it's strongest. But it's definitely one of those guns that I use up till, again, the midpoint of the game. Where I just try to stick to one or two guns, like a rifle or something else. Now, the Assault Run Head, I mentioned at the beginning because I have no idea, like, I, I have an idea of how strong it is, but I just don't think it's that useful. Because you have a lot of other weapons at the point you get this head. And while it can do a lot of damage in one go, it's just not that great. Like, it, it's, it's, a, it's a good, again, it's a good starter weapon, like the Fat Man. But the fat man kills multiple enemies in one go and damages the surrounding area around it. While this one is more point and shoot kind of thing. And if you miss, it, it sucks. <laughs> I'm also going to put this away because I don't actually know what gun this is either. Some of these I've never seen before and I'm going to have to like try to research them a little bit before I talk about them. And next up we have the actual assault rifle. This gun is very ugly. And it looks like a World War One gun, but not fully a World War One gun. It looks like it's all over the place. I don't know why they haven't changed this design. Or who came up with the water-cooled design. That also makes no sense. But the gun itself is very ugly. And for that reason, it's not going to be B or A tier. That's all I'm going to say. Oh, yeah. And also, uh, the reload animation is super weird about it. Like, I wish there was more detail. Uh, I usually install a mod that makes it look better. But without the mod to detail on the reload animations with this gun, it's like you pull out a mag, you put your mag away, boom, and then you pull out a mag. Or rather, you take the mag out, 
put it down below the screen and pull the hand up again and put it in. Like as if you don't swap a mag, you just kind of pull it out, pull it down and then up again and in. It is the worst reload animation I have ever seen for any gun in this game specifically. It is horrible. I, I just I just don't like it at all. <laughs> it's just this is bad. Uh, I, I but, but it is powerful. Like it is super powerful. It, it is a, one of the best games later on in the game. Actually, for that reason, I will like to put it to be. The only problem with this gun is that while it's powerful and good, it, the reload animation just sucks. It, it's not great. Uh, the damage output is nice. But I cannot put up with the way this gun looks. And even the sound of it is kind of muffled and weird. Like, I just don't like the gun at all. Again, this is my personal tier list. I'm pretty sure this is one of the guns you do use later on in the, the, the game. But I'm not basing it on damage output. I'm not basing it on how good it is against enemies. I'm just basing it on how good it is to use, how much damage it does again, and how you feel when using it. And, and, and even when you fight it too, it's just... It's just an ugly gun, and uh, it's a bit of a mess. It looks big and chunky. It's made for power armor, uh, but in this game, I don't think I've seen a lot of people use power armor, unless they're role-playing some kind of power armor person. Because you get pretty powerful without power armor too. But but yeah, it's not it's not the best game ever. Uh, gun I keep saying game, but gun ever, and it's not the worst. It's just a pretty decent one. Uh, then of course we have the combat rifle. That's what it's called. It just popped up in my head. Um, the combat rifle, in my opinion, is S tier. But why, Sitch? Why would you put it at S tier? Because it is probably the most. Actually, no, it's not. It, it is probably the fifth best or most interesting game gun in the game. So, the combat rifle is an ordinary rifle. It functions like a rifle. It shoots like a rifle. It kind of works like a rifle. You can make it automatic, you can make a single, you, you can put a weird sight on the end of it, or you can remove the sight. It, it is the most functional out of all of these, kinda. Besides the combat shotgun, I'd say, even though the combat shotgun looks a lot like it. Uh, it also has this normal feel to it. Like, like, it's just, it can be used for any situation. You can adjust it however you want. You can adjust it for short range by ma making it a shorter stock. You can adjust it for longer range by putting a scope on it. You, you, you can do anything with this gun, and you can pretty much make it into whatever you want. And the reload animation is decent. It's not the best ever, because Bethesda, for some reason, decides not to really do good reload animations. But the gun itself, super useful. I enjoy using it all the time when I play the game. I only ever not have it or don't have it whenever I have, um, have mods that give other guns. Otherwise, in Vanilla Fallout 4, I always use the combat shotgun. It is truly an S tier for me. It's just always a gun I have on me. Now, depending on who you are, whether you're an auto person or a semi-auto person, your opinion might change, because a semi-auto gun, it does a lot of damage. But then again, you do have other guns later on that also do a lot of damage. So it is not the, the most damaging weapon. But overall, it is also the one that's more interesting to fight against. It's nice to see other people have it too, you have to fight. And the different variations you can make with it is also kind of cool. I really do enjoy that. It is my one of my favorite weapons in the game. If not the favorite, just because of how normal it is. Uh, and I'll save this one for later, because again, I don't remember what this gun is. And now we have, oh, this is the Deliverer, I think. Or oh, is it the Makarov? I don't remember if it is the Makarov or the Deliverer. It is, it is the Deliverer. Okay, so they do have the Deliverer here. All right, so the Makarov is not part of the base game. Sorry, I'm playing with a lot of mods. <laughs> anyway, the Deliverer. The Deliverer is, I think, a modified Makarov, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it does a lot of damage. It is my late game pistol. It is... The pistol to have in the game. It has the silencer on it. Uh, it does a lot of damage. You get it from doing the um, railroad quests. I'm not going to say more than that. And it is just generally a place to use. It's just fun to use. Uh, it, it's also super powerful later on. And the reload animation is also decent. Like, there isn't really a lot to dislike about the gun. That's why it's S tier. 
It is all around just a good pistol. It is even something I still run with whenever I play vanilla. I always have this pistol, always have the combat rifle. And overall, it's just such a great gun to use. It, it really is satisfying to use and it just works for all moments and all things because it, the damage it does and how fast it does the damage. Also the fact that it has a silencer built on. It, it's, just, it's just good overall. Next up, we have the double barrel shotgun. Now the double barrel shotgun is a bit of a sad one for me because I always use it early on. You get it fairly early on. You use the combat or the, or the double barrel shotgun, I mean. And it, it does so much damage per shot in the beginning. And then the later on you go, the worse it gets because the enemy levels with you and stuff. So it's it's sad that, that I have to rank it because I, I love using it. I love the reload animation. It's one of my favorite reload animations in the game. It, uh, although I still replace it with mods because, you know, it's, <laughs> I must still do it better. But the reload animation is, is phenomenal. The, the fact that it shoots two bullets you have to reload makes it both have a weak point, but also give it a strength. So whenever you do have reloaded, it's super powerful. It's just nice to sometimes give yourself a weakness that you have to kind of try to protect and compromise. So you usually have another weapon ready whenever this reloads and I swap to it if I'm ever in danger. So the double barrel shotgun really has a place in my heart because how, how nice it is to use. Uh, the fact that it shoots too and has a weakness. It just gives it gun charm and, and history to me. It, it's just so nice to use in the game. I don't know if you guys share that with me. But when it comes to being functional, it is as functional as the 10mm is. Like, as soon as you reach later game, you're going to get rid of it. You're not going to keep it. There's so many better options. And uh, there's just no way you're going to keep that one. Wait, this is a fat man, isn't it? Then what is this guy? This weapon. I'm going to put this up here then. I think I think that's the fat man because it looks like it. Um, okay, next up we have a, uh, I think it's called the Lever Action Rifle. It got added with the Far Harbor DLC, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it is also pretty much, I mean, I'm going to have to put it A tier. I would put it S tier. It's also going to have at the end of the game. Uh, so so the, the thing with the Lever Action Rifle is um, <laughs> bullet counted reload. Uh, that's probably all I needed to say for you guys to understand why I put it at 8 here. But it, it's nice to use those kind of Wild West guns. Kind of reminds me of New Vegas. It does a lot of damage per shot. It's fun to use. It has, again, the same thing, kind of weakness that a double barrel shotgun has, where you have to kind of reload it on the side slowly. The difference between this one and the double barrel shotgun is that this one has to reload... I think eight bullets every single time you reload. So you have to use all of the bullets in the actual thing before you can reload it. Otherwise, you're pretty much wasting time whenever you fight. And it is such a weakness to have, though. It is such a big weakness to have. Like it, it is, it is such a thing. Like I don't know, even know how many times I've died when I tried to reload this thing when I played. I died so many times. It's just crazy how much I died when I used that. It, it just did not go well for me. <laughs> like at all. So I'm going to have to put it at A tier. But I like using it. It is a good gun. It just does not really work. Because of the bullet recounted reload. If you get the mod that fixes the, the counted reload. Uh, then it would be S tier. But because of that I ended up barely using it. Just because the reload animation took too long. And I, in, in those situations it's just easier to use an, another weapon. Especially if you're on higher difficulties where enemies have a lot of health. You have to reload this like three times to kill one big strong enemy. And that just isn't going to cut it. It's just not going to work. So I'm going to have to put it at A tier. Because when it is reloaded. And when you do fire it. And when you do upgrade it. It's good. Uh, next up, I think we have, I think it's called the Radium Rifle. It do, does irradiation damage like the, the Gamma Gun or Gamma Gun does. And I also think it's added with the Fahaba DLC. Uh, but at the same time, it also actually does gun damage. But don't get me wrong, while it is better than the Gamma Gun, it just isn't a lot better. Um, the highest, I think the highest upgrade for it isn't that great either. And, and when you aim down sight, you have the annoying thing in your face. In case you don't know what I'm talking about, in the front of the gun, it has like a weird circle on it. Um, a lot like similar to, to the Gamma gun here. And that circle ends up being in the sight. So you can't actually see very well where you're shooting. 
Now, if that wasn't there, I probably would maybe bump this up to B tier. But even then, it isn't a great gun. Like, it, it, the damage it does versus the ammo it uses, uh, again, versus all the other weapons in the game, it just doesn't really work that well. I, I do wish it did, but it just doesn't. Um, I will have to put it up um, on, on C tier. So don't get what this is called, Deacon. But, uh, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Deacon is bad here, just so you guys understand. I, I don't know if I said that, but Deacon means bad in this case. Now, the Flamer. The Flamer is a heavy weapon. I don't really use it, but when you do use it, you do a lot of damage. The problem is the, the condition for using it is you need to be somewhat close to the enemy. It does have a decent range, but it's, it's, just, it's just not worth trying to close the range when you can just snipe them. A mini nuke them and then a mini nuke them and then snipe them and then shoot them with a rifle and then go in. So it also becomes kind of bad to use that later on in the game. Because again, it requires the enemy to rush you. Most of the time they do, but you can shoot them at a distance while they rush you first before you use the flamer to kill them when they're already close. It's only really useful against uh, melee enemies later on. And again, that's, that's fairly rare that enemies that are in melee really get close to you whenever you reach the stage where you get the flamer anyway. Only time they get close to you if you don't have enough damage to kill them fast. And uh, even then the flamer is, while well, it does a lot of damage, it, it, it the ammo is fairly rare and it just doesn't do a whole lot. Oh yeah, it also weighs a lot. That's also kind of a thing you need to consider in this one. It weighs a lot. So it's not a great weapon to carry around, especially when you have other options. Next up, we have the Gauze Rifle. The Gauze Rifle... I do I remember. How much ammo does one shot take? I'm gonna put it at 8 here. Uh, I remember using it a lot when I used it because it does a lot of damage if you charge it. So you hold down a button, you charge it up to 100, I think, or 99, and then you release the button and it shoots. It is good. It, it, it is good when you hit with it and when it, you, you actually kill something. Uh, and it does, I, I think it takes more ammo the, each time you shoot. I don't know if it's two cells or four cells or five. It takes a lot of ammo, but it still does a lot of damage. So that ammo is not wasted. Uh, so I used to use it a lot instead of my laser rifle later on in the game. Um, so I usually replace the laser one with this one. I no, actually, because they use the same, they use different ammo, don't they? Well, I still got rid of my laser rifle because I didn't want to carry too much weight on me. Uh, but the ghost rifle is pretty good. I would recommend checking it out. It's actually pretty decent. Uh, it just, again, uh, like with a lot of these guns later on, you just stick to one or two guns, really. And then you end up going the whole game with those guns after you've tried all of them. Figure out which ones you like. Uh, next up we have the Hunting Rifle. The Hunting Rifle is this here. It's also one of those guns I always keep in my inventory, even later on in the game. Because you can upgrade it to be pretty decent, you can snipe them at a distance. The Sniper is a pretty good build uh, and you do a lot of damage with it. It's only later on in the game when you really get good sniper though, uh, like get a good sniper though. And it, it's, it is still pretty good. Like, don't get me wrong. It, it is, it is, or oh, it can be pretty bad in the beginning anyway. As, or rather in the mid part of the game, it's pretty bad. Because you start out by getting the hunting rifle, you're like, wow, there's a lot of damage. Then the further on you get and the level up, the more it's like, wait, this hunting rifle doesn't use as much, do as much damage as it used to. What's going on? And that is very true. It doesn't do as much damage as it used to, but then you just upgrade it and now it's good again. And, and it, it keeps going like that where you just upgrade it to max and then when you upgrade it to max it's just never really gonna get old to use uh, especially when you can aim for the body parts of all that is good it just doesn't really like uh, it uh, does get a bit outdated in the end when you're just rushing in with a combat rifle or a uh, or the deliverer as an example but when I don't use those I usually use the sniper rifle because the sniper rifle itself is fairly powerful Especially when you're trying to take out enemies at a distance where they can't even shoot you. Also while you're sneaked. So uh, it, it's, it's just a, a... You've got to have a sniper rifle at all times. It's just kind of a rule in every shooter, kind of. 
except Call of Duty because they are very like rush levels, so you have to rush the enemy. But if you if you can approach things your way, you almost always need a sniper rifle to to kind of figure out what you want to plan, who you want to shoot, all that kind of stuff. Not to mention, it's always useful to have a a gun that can have a long scope like this one, just to see where the enemies are, their positioning, and where you kind of want to approach the enemy from, just to keep an eye on them. Because I don't think the game has binoculars, so um, yeah, it's just way easier to use a scope as well to see and then also snipe if you see like someone who's away from all his friends you have a silencer boom guy dead now you can approach from that position so the sniper is a very great tactical weapon uh and also just great in general to assassinate enemies and, and kill them from a distance now we have the institute laser rifle and i'm gonna put that all the way at uh, it's probably b tier it's it's functional it does damage I, th I think it even does more damage than the actual laser rifle here. Uh, but the thing is that it's just... it's just bad. Or you can even turn them into sniper rifles, I think. But the thing is, it, it's bulky. It looks ugly. It stands out so much out in the wasteland. I'm surprised. That, and it also looks so similar to the actual laser rifle that I kind of wish they changed the design completely to something else. It just shoots blue in, instead of red. <laughs> That's kind of the main difference about it. I think it does slightly more damage, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it, it is one of the weapons I get once, shoot it once, and I'm like, ew. I also think the side on it kind of sucks, if I remember right. It, the, the side is also not that great. Uh, the main problem with the laser weapons, if you don't know, is that they also take up a lot of space on your screen. So this also takes up a whole lot of space on your screen that could otherwise be fine, and there's a mod that fixes that, of course. Like, a lot of other things that's wrong with these guns, the mods fixes. Uh, but as laser weapon goes, it's just ugly, it stands out too much, you get seen easily by radars and enemies, so it's just not a conventional weapon to have in the wasteland. It's only there because the Institute isn't shy about who they are, so they're sending a message to people that they're the Institute by having a bright white gun. And it kind of fits the theme of the Institute, how they see themselves as superior, but it, it doesn't really make sense for the person, a person to steal it from them and then use it themselves. So I, I think for the purpose of the Institute, it's great. But for me as a player, it's just kind of a worse laser weapon. Next up, we have the, the laser musket. Now, this gun has so much charm to it. Like, it's probably my favorite design weapon. The way it's designed, how you can charge the handle three of times and such to make it more powerful. It It's... It's actually fairly powerful in the beginning and mid-game if you stick with it. And if you know how to hit, that is. Especially if you use VATS, it's also super powerful. It is super slow at firing. But when you fire, oh my goodness, you're almost guaranteed to kill the enemy all the time, depending on how much you upgrade the gun. It, it, it gets super powerful. I always use it up to mid-game, where I get rid of it for another weapon. Because at that point, there are so many enemies and the amount of damage is usually only half their health, if not 75% of their health gone. So I, I don't really use it further than that. But if you use it correctly, and if you hit all the time with it, it's an air tear weapon. You wouldn't think that, right? You usually just kind of brush it off and go, oh, I don't really want to use this, right? But it gets super good when you upgrade the cranking. I hope there's not a mod, by the way, that, that, that upgrades the cranking. I think you can upgrade it to three times, if I'm not mistaken. But again, it could just be a mod, but I don't think so. I don't think I modded anything like that for the, the laser musket. But it gets super good. Um, trust me, you should try it out. Try it out on like in, in your game, uh, upgrade it fully, and then see how much damage it does. Um, I could be remembering it completely wrong, but it wasn't that long ago I played Fallout 4, so. Again, completely uh, up to some mid games. So if you're late game, it probably won't do as much damage as I say it will. But if you're mid game, you haven't found uh, Diamond City, or you're just done finding Diamond City, um, try out the laser musket. It's very powerful still. It's only later on in the game it gets pretty weak. So uh, there's that. The same can actually be said about the laser rifle slash pistol slash whatever else you want to call this. I actually like the laser weapons a lot. And the laser rifle in particular is one of my favorite designs. Um, especially one of my favorite upgrades. Because in the older games you couldn't even aim down sight with it. In this game it has a decent sight. It has uh, a fun... Like, you can upgrade it as much as you want, and it, it's it's a cool way to, to kind of fight enemies, to so just use laser weapons. It uses microfusion cells. 
good thing about laser weapons and normal weapons is they use different calibers and different kind of ammo. So uh, microfusion sells by itself, while, while the laser musket also uses it. The laser weapon also tends to use it, and it, you can make it pretty powerful. The main problem with the laser weapons is that if you make them automatic, they feel weird to use and they also don't do a lot of damage. So I never make them automatic, I always keep them semi-auto. I, I don't know why they feel weird, they just do. I, I would never recommend making it automatic. Maybe you like it, but it just, it just feels wrong. <laughs> it feels very, very wrong. But for the most part, I do indeed enjoy it. Uh, it also feels powerful, which is my favorite part about it. It has recoil. I know it's a laser weapon, but it has recoil. Maybe their laser weapons in their universe is different and they have recoil. There's always like that explanation that can be said about it. Um, but ultimately, I would pretty much say that the, the laser weapon is, is my favorite laser weapon of all time in the, in the Fallout universe. And it is definitely a weapon I recommend you try out uh, once or twice. There are a lot of people saying they're not really into laser weaponry and I can understand why because we don't have any in real life and you can't really relate to it that much. But I do think it's cool and it's always fun using it when you're part of the Brotherhood of Steel as an example and in Power Armor. It just, it just feels right. <laughs> It just feels right. Next up, we have the um, the s machine gun. Is that is it just what it's called, machine gun? Let me just double check. Is that just machine gun? Heavy weapons. It is straight up just called. Oh, that's what that weapon is. Okay. Um, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba machine gun, machine gun. I don't know if I can find machine gun. This is called minigun. Okay, there we go. So minigun. It's useless. You get in the beginning after you find your power armor. It's like shooting a BB gun. If you know what those are from earlier Fallout games. It does damage, sure. But just so little damage that you're never going to use it again after that. I don't know why they decided to make a minigun of all things super weak. Especially with 5mm rounds. Which shouldn't work like peas. But it is still fairly... I understand if it was 22 LR go like ammo, right? But but actual like it's using minigun rounds, correct? It, it makes no sense that it does like no damage at all. It's just a weird weapon to have in the game, and it's weird how they made it so underpowered. I, I think it must have been a mistake, and they just kind of went with it afterwards. They're like, oh, the machine gun, we I give it to them early, make them feel cool, and then just make it super underpowered and never really use it again. I also don't think you fight a lot of enemies with it. It's, it's such a weird weapon to add to the game that it only really serves one purpose. And that's to make the player feel badass, but not really be badass, but only early on. Next up, we have the rocket launcher. Uh, the rocket launcher I'm going to put to G tier. Uh, just because, I mean, it, it doesn't have the whole issue with the fat man, uh, where you shoot an enemy and everything works fine. And all of a sudden, boom, everything's fine. Um, like where you killed yourself all the time. But you still kill yourself all the time. <laughs> but but not because of the reasons you think. This time, instead of shooting upwards, you shoot straight. And when you shoot straight, there's a chance you have a companions. Or even an enemy is going to walk near you. And then you shoot them and you kill yourself. Because of the, the straight angle of the, the rocket. Uh, the, the best part about this gun is you can target a strong enemy and shoot it. The problem is just that this, the, the way Fallout 4 is designed, you never really fight any enemy that feels strong enough to use it on. Like, you see a Deathclaw once, right? You're scared, you, you get killed. But then next time you fight the, the Deathclaw, it seems like it's weaker. And now it's so weak, you can use it to kill it with a 10mm pistol if you want. But to kill it faster, you need a stronger gun. But uh, the rocket launcher is so slow that why use it? Like, why use the rocket launcher when you just use a, um, a combat rifle to deliver or, or even a sniper rifle to take it from a distance? Or even better, a combat shotgun. That's kind of the... I, I, I kind of call the combat shotgun personally. I call it the Deathclaw Killer. Because, oh my god, later on in the game. <laughs> like, a combat shotgun kills Deathclaws, no problem. You know what? I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna put this at S tier. Because it's usually also part of my arsenal. Uh, but just know that it has drawbacks. And I never really use it for any distance fightings. Uh, I use all of these instead. Uh, but, wow, it, it gets good against creatures. Next up, we have my f 
second favorite assault rifle. Uh, I only say second favorite because it has its issues. Uh, it's the one that came with the Nuka World DLC. It is um, just an assault rifle. Now I'm a I'm actually gonna put it on on S tier, and that's not because it's better than the combat rifle because I actually think it's worse. Um, it has a legendary or a unique variant that does more damage the more you hit the enemy. Like each consecutive shot hits an enemy, and then the more damage you do each time it hits, and then it gets super powerful with auto. Or even semi-auto if you hit every single hit. That means you do more damage the more you hit the enemy. And because you're always hitting the enemy, you know, uh, that means more damage for the next bullet. But even without that, it's also the most sane gun in the game. It, it looks like an AK, but it looks like a handmade AK. Uh, it kind of has the same kind of layout. Ultimately, it, it, it's fun to use. It does a decent amount of damage. It's also... Again, the sights are nice. It, it, it's just there's something about an AK that's just super legendary, and it, it feels like it really does that job very well. It fills out that role. It's an all-round assault rifle. It is one I always use in the Nuka World DLC, and then I kind of throw it away because the combat rifle I do think is better. Uh, it could just be because I preferred the combat rifle and threw it away before making it better. But for me, it always felt like the combat rifle was the semi-auto weapon. Uh, and the handmade AK, a handmade uh, assault rifle, I think is what it's called, always felt like a an automatic weapon to me. So I always made it automatic, and maybe that's why I feel like there's such a damage difference between them. But ultimately, I, I ended up just throwing it away because of my combat rifle. Uh, because I think they use the same ammo, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so... Yeah, uh, next up we have the pipe gun. I don't know why there are two of them. I'm just gonna put one of them on and then ignore the rest. So the pipe gun. Uh, the pipe gun is... I mean, it's it's bad. It's very bad. Uh, it's it's awful. I don't know why they added it to the game the way they did. I mean, when it becomes a pipe rifle, it's a temporary sniper rifle until you get a variant of this gun up here. So, you know, I'll put it here just because it has a sniper vi rifle variant that I usually use uh, in the beginning until I get an actual sniper rifle. But even then, it's pretty bad. Uh, by the time you have a 10mm pistol, which is the first weapon you get, it's already outdated, and it's kind of useless already. There's nothing great about it. It uses 38 ammo, I guess that's its redeeming quality. There aren't a lot of weapons that use 38 ammo, so you can just kind of use the pipe weapon in case you run out of ammo. You can upgrade it to different things. Uh, it, it's, it can be good if you upgrade it in the beginning. But later on, it's going to be outdated whether you upgrade it to max or not, so there's no point in using it. Uh, I'm pretty... Oh, I know why the two of them now. It's because they're both... Like, this is the actual pistol, which I'm going to put down here, and this is the rifle variant, or the sniper rifle variant that I'm talking about. I think I can see it by the side here. It's, no, it's, it's opposite, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's opposite. There you go. <laughs> but, but yeah, it's... It's just bad. Pretty much all around. The railway rifle, I mean, it, it's pretty decent. It's not something I usually run with later on in the game, but it does a lot of damage. So it's fun to run around with. There's not much to say about it. It's heavy. It shoots straight. It does a lot of damage when you shoot someone. Uh, it, it you, The ammo is pretty rare again, so there's not really much point in having it. But if you want to run around and stick people to walls, I think you can do that. Uh, then you can go ahead and use it. Besides that, there's not much a use for it. Like, it's, it's just okay. And here's the sad one for me personally. When I saw, like, the Tommy gun, or even the Thompson in the game, I was like, wow, they're gonna have such a great weapon. But it's actually not that great. Uh, mods add in better Thompsons, and the animations are also, I'm pretty sure, it's the same as an assault rifle. Uh, I mean, I could be wrong there. I could be wrong. But ultimately, the, the gun itself is a bit disappointing. It doesn't do a lot of damage. It, it's more of a waste of ammo than anything else. When you actually fire with it, 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 it just doesn't do enough damage to justify the stuff. Like in the beginning, it does when you find it. When you fight the trigger, I mean, or you, fire, you look for Nick. Um, it, it's pretty okay. And then after that, for some reason, there's like this big bump where you either have to upgrade it or you have to um, make it... No, I think it is... Can, can it be made semi-auto? I'm not quite sure. But it doesn't do a lot of damage. It really doesn't. And it just wastes all your ammo. 
And it's fun to use, don't get me wrong. I do enjoy it, and I do enjoy that you can just spam it because before having to reload and stuff. But ultimately, the problem with it is just that it, it wastes all your ammo. Uh, it really does. Uh, when you could use any other gun instead, it just wastes your ammo. And that's a bit sad because I really like it. But it's not better than any of the other weapons, really. It also gets pretty bad later on in the game. The Syringer Rifle, I'm going to put that at C tier. Because uh, if you take your time and you play a specific way, you can probably make it powerful. Because of the range on it. And you can use different effects on enemies. Uh, it's kind of fun how you can play with it. Personally, I prefer to hold one in and gun and shoot method. But if you really want to, you can kind of sit out and let them kill themselves and each other. I don't know if there is a frenzy mix you can make. But I know there's one where you can poison the enemy. And then they slowly die over time. And then they slowly die. And then they fall over. Uh, it's pretty fun for just messing with the enemy, I guess. Uh, it doesn't make it super useful. But again, it can be if you use it right. Now we also have this huge, chunky laser. Is this the laser Gatling gun? I think it's the laser Gatling gun. Um, I, I, I'm going to put it here too, a B tier. It's good if you have too much ammo. Again, it, it's the same as the Tommy gun or the Thompson as we have here. It just eats your ammo. There's not much to it. It really just eats your ammo. I I don't really have anything really positive to say about it. I, I like how it functions. I like how it looks, but it just wastes your ammo. And I don't. I never use it because of that. Because you just, if you have too much ammo, you should use it. It does a lot of damage. It's pretty decent against a lot of enemies. But I I never have enough ammo to justify it. And even if I do, I I prefer using a laser rifle and just taking my time killing an enemy instead of just kind of hurrying to kill it. Because that's what this kind of feels like. It feels like a I don't have time to fight this enemy, so I gotta kill it fast kind of weapon. And next up, we have the Junk Jet. Is that what it's called? I, I, I always call it Junk Jet, but I don't actually remember if that's the name of it. But Junk Jet. So the Junk Jet is, is a gun where you can feed Junk to and it shoots the Junk at the enemy. I always found this super useful in my head. Because, oh, oh I, don't, I found Junk all over the place and I, and I shoot at the enemy and they die. Wow. But I usually don't do that because junk is also used for settlements. If it was in the old Fallout games, I would totally have used it. Except for the fact that junk weighs a lot. And if you carry all of it with you as ammo, when ammo weighs less, then you might as well just remove it and use another gun. Like, no, no matter how you put it, the gun itself is just not that great. Uh, it, it is... It is nice. It's a nice idea, but it doesn't fit into the games at all. Like, it's a nice idea in real life. It's like, oh, we have this weapon that gives you junk. But in this game, there is no junk that is kind of useless. There's some junk that gives more items than others, but why not just take that junk and then go take it to your settlement and then it's still going to give you resources. It's just a good mess around weapon, but ultimately it's kind of useless because it goes against the game's own me mechanics. So I don't really, I don't ever use it. I do know it can be pretty powerful though. I have used it. But ultimately it's just it's just a waste of junk. <laughs> I never thought I would say that, but it really is. Next up we just have the simple revolver. I don't remember if it's just called um Is it Kellogg's pistol? No, it's not Kellogg's pistol. I, I've seen this gun before multiple times. You can just be Kellogg's, is it? No, Is it just Kellogg's? No, no, that's not Kellogg's pistol. Is this a 44 pistol? I don't, I don't know. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. In any case, um, this gun. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you can see it in the actual thing, but it doesn't really matter too much. Um, but this pistol itself is also in the game. It is something you find at the beginning of the game. It's not as powerful as this one up here. But it is fairly powerful early on. But again, it has the same issue as the pipe rifles. As soon as you get later on in the game, it's just useless. It, it doesn't really do anything. Uh, you might as well just upgrade to this one. It does more damage. I don't remember what kind of ammo it takes. I think it also takes 44. 
Uh, I don't actually maybe it doesn't. I I'm not fairly I'm not entirely sure about that. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not entirely sure about that. But I I I it's just something I always ignore because it's never really useful. Plus, I usually use the pipe revolver instead because the pipe revolver I think is actually better than this one. This is more fun to use. Uh, next up, we have the. I don't know if this is the Prod Cider or not, but I'm just gonna say this is the Prod Cider. The Prod Cider is a special cannonball firing thing that you can use if you really want to. It does quite a lot of, of damage, but ultimately, it's never really. It's, it's never really good in the same aspect that the. Other ones are like this is the thing with this weapon is uses cannonballs, very heavy cannonballs. You shoot an enemy, it does a lot of damage, right? But it does it so slow that you might as well take out another gun again and shoot the enemy and it will kill them faster. At least it's a little while after when you leveled up and you become stronger again, like after mid-game. Then then this just becomes an extra weapon you can use if you ever want to have fun. Like it can be useful. It's probably more useful than the Gatling laser, in all honesty. But it is still not useful later on in the game. Now we have the Cryolator, because I know that one. So the Cryolator is a... Um, is a cryo weapon, of course. It I'm pretty sure you can upgrade it to not... Uh, it's like a flamethrower in the beginning, I think. Now, now, now I'm going to have to use my brain. Um, but then you can upgrade it to just shoot normally. I am, if, if I remember correctly. You have limited ammo. I don't think you can craft the ammo. Uh, it is actually a pretty good weapon, so I will put a beta. But again, ultimately, it's just not useful. It, it kind of just, later on in the game, it, it, it's, it's just something you sit on. It freezes enemies, yeah, it's great. It's the only game, uh, gun in the game that gives cryo. But... Ultimately, it's just not necessary. It's just not good to use. It, it doesn't really help anyone. Uh, you have other weapons that do more damage. This, this one just tends to use this ammo and just sit there and weigh a lot in your inventory. And I usually just don't use it because of that. Like, it's, it's a special gun and you use special ammo. But it's not useful in practice in the game. So I don't know what their plan was for it, because like you have to get behind a very high lockpick thingy, but at the same time, it's just not useful. So whatever they decided to get, I I don't know, but yeah, uh, or why they decided to get it, I don't know. And uh, next up, we have I think this is the incinerator. I'm not quite sure. What is it? Wait, harpoon gun? Did I not get the harpoon? The harpoon gun is here. Wait, did I did I talk about the harpoon gun? Oh no, it's because I thought it was the fat man. No, this is the fat man. So so this is the harpoon gun. I'm very sorry about that. I don't know why I thought it was the not, not the harpoon gun. So this is the harpoon gun. It's also part of the Far Harbor DLC. I'm just gonna keep it there because it makes sense. It's the same as the cannon one. Uh, it does a lot of damage, but ultimately it's just too slow to really be useful in battle. You shoot it once, you swap to another weapon at best. A lot like the fat man. The problem is the fat man does way more damage. So. The fat man is the best shoot first, run in after kind of weapon. The harpoon is just good against big enemies, I guess. Big slow enemies, I would say, is probably its best um, best thing to use. Now, I think this is the incinerator. I don't know what other gun it would possibly be. Uh, so let's just say it is the incinerator because if it's not the incinerator, then I don't know what it is. Uh, the incinerator shoots fire bombs. I what are you, what is it even called? It shoots. It uses flame of fuel, but it, like shoots weird like flame balls at the enemy instead. It, it, like the flamethrower is like a an area of effect weapon, right? You shoot it at a certain distance, and it surrounds the stuff. Uh, the actual f uh, f uh, heavy incinerator here, it shoots like fireballs at enemies so they can be further away. It does a lot of damage. I don't even know if it's explosive. Uh, technically, it's it's more useful than a lot of these things here. 
It, it does a lot of damage. I always use that if I want to use flame of fuel. Or the, instead of the flame, I always use this. Because it just, it's just better overall. I, I just don't think that the thing itself here is, is that great. Um, the, the actual flamer versus heavy incinerator is not even a big discussion. It's just the heavy incinerator is better. It, 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 the flame balls it's used is just too good. There's no way that the flamer would ever be better than that one. Uh, and it's probably the most useful out of all the big weapons because it has a fairly fast fire rate too. So I, I would argue if you want to go with a heavy weapon, the heavy incinerator is actually pretty good. It's probably the best one out of all of them to use against anything. But that being said, S tier is combat rifle, a deliverer pistol, sniper rifle, uh, or, or, or rather hunting rifle upgraded to sniper rifle, uh, the combat shotgun, and the handmade rifle. Then at A tier we have the alien pistol, the plasma rifle slash pistol, the liver action rifle, the Gauss rifle, a laser musket, and laser pistol slash rifle slash whatever you want to turn it into. And the other ones you can see, they're not really worth mentioning. Th these up here are weapons I usually go with mid to late game. This down here is usually weapons I go with from uh, first in the game to mid game. Or, and after that, I kind of ignore them and don't ever use them again. Unless I kind of want to just mess about and have fun, I guess. Then you can use some of them. But ultimately, that is, uh, that is going to be my tier list. Now, let me know if you guys disagree with anything or if you agree with anything I did in this tier list. What are your favorite guns in the game? You can comment that down below. What is your favorite gun in Fallout 4? What do you always roll with? Is it the Gamma Gun? <laughs> I don't, the Junk Jet? Like, who, who knows? Maybe you guys actually do enjoy using those. Maybe you are using those. I wouldn't know. I just never used them myself. I haven't really seen any other people really play Fallout 4 that I talk to. It's always like, for some reason, I'm like the only one of my friends that really like playing Fallout 4. Um, even like, I, I do, at the base level, I know Fallout 4 is not a great game. Like, I, I know it's not a great game. But with the mods, it becomes the best game in existence. And at least the potential to be the best game in existence because of the foundation. Because you can do so much with it. But uh, as a base game, it is very lacking, so I get why no one really likes it. But I don't get why so many people refuse to talk about the modding and stuff with me. It's so sad. It's so sad. You, leave me in the comment. What is your favorite mod as well? Let me know. What is your favorite mod for Fallout 4? I know no dirty mods. It has to be <laughs> it has to be gun mods. What is your favorite gun mod for Fallout 4? And uh, yeah, I mean, I guess that's going to be for this video. Uh, sometimes I just enjoy sitting down, talking about um, these things figuring out what I like, uh, talking to you guys about what I like, and, and kind of getting to know myself a bit, getting to know how I would rank things, seeing how I play the game myself, evaluate my play styles, and so on and so forth. Yeah, sometimes I just enjoy sitting here, talking about how I play games, uh, w what I focus on when I make tier lists, and so on and so forth. And it's just nice, and I hope you guys enjoyed it too. I do enjoy making these tier lists. I have not made one in a while because uh, I've been busy with other stuff. But I do hope you guys enjoyed watching this one. Uh, you can also leave a comment saying what you want me to do a tier list of next if you want me to. I have a, a couple other ones planned already, so it could be fun to just do them as well. But uh, I would prioritize what you guys ask for if that's the case. Um, but yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, consider liking, subscribing, and sharing. Hope to see you in another one of my tier lists or even one of my list plays. And as always, stay awesome. <laughs>